If you're trying to identify an unknown biological parent or grandparent, or if you've recently taken a DNA test and you're trying to work on a brick wall, you might have heard that you should start with the Leeds method. Hi, I'm Dana Leeds, and I developed this method while working with someone who was adopted, so they didn't know who any of their DNA matches were. And this method helped sort their matches into four groups that represented their four grandparent lines. That's the best case scenario and your results may vary. But the Leeds method is a great first step in sorting your DNA matches so you can identify close or more distant biological ancestors. Now the Leeds method doesn't use our highest matches. It starts with like about the second to third cousin range. Why is that? Well, if we used higher matches, let's say we used first cousins, we would only get potentially two clusters, one that was paternal and one that was maternal. So instead we wanna go back a generation. So first cousins share a set of grandparents with us. Our second cousins share a set of great grandparents with us. And our third cousins share sets of great great grandparents with us. And so we use these to potentially get those four clusters that are related to your four different grandparents. Now this is what a Leeds method chart looks like. And this is actually using my real data from Ancestry, but I've changed the names to privatize them and I've left some matches out to make it simpler. You can see that the first column is the match name. The second is the number of cinemorgans. And we use from 400 down to 90 cinemorgans, trying to stick within that second to third cousin range. If you know how some of these matches are related to you, we will try to avoid those who share two grandparents with you. So like a first cousin. My matches do short into four color clusters, and we're gonna look at just a basic tree here. And you can see that each of these colors is related to one of my grandparents. And so we have the four colors, and that's what the Leeds method does. It takes our DNA matches, it sorts them into meaningful groups, and in a best case scenario, we see these four clusters. I'll also talk a bit about why sometimes we get more or less clusters, and in future videos, I'll go more in depth into that. Now I've already set up my spreadsheet. I'm using Excel. You can also use Google Sheets or you can just use a piece of paper and just draw on it. And we're gonna assign a color to the first person on the list. And so I'm gonna go on Excel, I'm going to home and I'm just gonna find this bucket and I'm gonna make him purple. Now I add an asterisk and I do all this fancy stuff cause I'm going to center it and turn it white so it's easier to see. But Gary gets this white asterisk because he's a key person. He is gonna be the one who gathers the purple cluster. So we're gonna to go to Ancestry and look at his shared matches and anybody who shares DNA with both me and Gary gets the color purple. Now here on my DNA match list, I found Gary who shares 333 cinnamorgans of DNA with me. And I'm gonna click on him and if I know who he is, I'm gonna make sure he's only related to one of my grandparents and not two. Now I'm to this relationship page that's between me and Gary. It actually would say you and Gary, but I've got it privatized right now. And that slows things down a bit, but it also blurs things for me to make it private. And mine is the shared matches pro. Yours might be shared matches or shared matches pro, which look different, but either way it'll work. So let's click on shared matches. And here's a quick tip. All of the matches I will be looking for, everybody that's already on my spreadsheet is between 490. So we can look at only those. To do that, we're gonna click on Filter Shared Matches and click on Shared DNA and type in 90 to 400. And then we won't have all these people to wade through. Everybody that's on this list should be on my list on that spreadsheet. Now I privatized and changed these names and so they're gonna be different than the spreadsheet, but let's go back to the spreadsheet. But everybody on the list, this list should get purple because they're part of the purple cluster. They match both me and Gary. And so we are all likely related because we have the same common ancestors. And so the people that I need to color are Perry, Janet and Fanny, and Helen. And now that completes our first color cluster, purple. Now the next step is to go to the highest person on this list who doesn't already have a color. That would be Stacy. She doesn't have a color. I'm going to click on Stacy and change the color to blue. Once again, I'm going to add an asterisk. I like to change it to white so it shows up better and center it. Now Stacy is going to gather some matches. 
These would be people who share DNA with both Stacy and me. So again, we all likely have common ancestors and they're all likely related to a specific part of my family tree. And so we just go back to ancestry and look at her shared matches and they all get the color blue. She only had two extra matches, so I've colored them. And now we just keep repeating those steps until everyone has at least one color. So let's go back to the top and find the highest person without a color. That is clay. Clay is gonna get the color green. Again, you just pick whatever color you want. And I'm gonna add an asterisk because he's gonna gather these matches for me. I'm gonna center and mark it white. And then I'll go back to ancestry and look at people who are shared matches of clay. So they share DNA with me and they share it with clay. Again, we're all likely related because we share common ancestors and it's one part of my family tree. So now the green cluster is created and we just repeat the steps because there's still people who don't have a color. We go to the top, look down, and we see Sarah doesn't have a color. So Sarah is gonna start the new color cluster. We're gonna use red for Sarah. Add that asterisk, she's my key person. I'm gonna center it and change it white. Then I'm gonna to go to Ancestry, look at her shared matches, and they all get the color red. So now I've completed the red color cluster. Those are Sarah's shared matches. And now we would repeat this step again. We look down the list, and everybody has at least one color. And so our initial leads method chart is complete. Now, I also wanna show you how you can sort these, and that's more important when you have lots and lots of matches, but let's see how we can sort, at least on Excel. It's pretty hard on paper. You would have to pretty much free draw it, and you could figure out how to do it on Google Sheets. I select the whole page, and then I go to data, sort, and then I'm going to delete this level. We're gonna start again. I'm gonna add a level. I'm gonna say sort by cluster one, and it's gonna be by cell color. And then I'm gonna copy this twice. I don't really have to do cluster four because it will be just what's left over. And I'm gonna sort each of these colors or these clusters by colors. So purple, then blue and green. And so it should give us all the purples then all the blues, then all the greens and the leftovers are red and I select OK, select OK, and now I have the leads method and everybody's sorted. Now my next job is to figure out what these clusters mean. And that's harder, of course, if you have unknown biological parents or grandparents. If you know your tree pretty well, this is probably gonna be fairly easy, but we figure out how the people in each cluster are related to each other and then figure out how they're related to you. And that's the next step in this process. Now, as I mentioned, getting four color clusters representing your four grandparents is the best case scenario, but not everybody will get four color clusters. But let's look at what happens when you get fewer or more and what are some possibilities. In this case, we got three instead of four color clusters. So there's a couple things that could be going on. One is that in that 90 to 400 centimorgan range, you only have three of your four grandparents represented or two of your grandparents could be biologically related to each other, so you'd only get three color clusters, or you might have used somebody who actually shares two grandparents in common with you. In this example, for instance, we have Stacy here who is a key match, and so she started the yellow color clusters and she grabbed all of her shared matches. Well, if Stacy was actually like a first cousin once removed and she was related to two of your grandparents, and in this example, I've labeled them Roberts and Cole, then she would have gathered people who are both Roberts and Cole. So if you'd skip Stacy and maybe started with Julie, who actually is just a Roberts or just a Cole, you might see those four different color clusters. So that's one thing you wanna check, and especially if you don't know who people are, is kind of skip some of those top matches and see if you can actually get four colors. You also might get quite a few color clusters. Often when this happens, you don't have many that are up there in the three to 400 range that are more like second cousins. So you're seeing more third cousins and they're just not grabbing a whole grandparent line at a time. So this is perfectly fine. You just work with whatever you get and clusters of one are hard to work with, but still you figure out how the people in each color cluster are related to each other and then how they're related to you. That helps you define what the color cluster means to you. Now, this is just the first in a series about the leads method. So if you want to learn more, please come back. I also have links to a free handout down below. So please sign up for that and you can print it out and keep it by your desk and it'll walk you through the leads method. And I'll be covering different aspects of the leads method and different results that you might have. So please stay tuned. Please
please like and subscribe and comment. And don't forget to pick up your free, easy to use handout down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.